Americans love celebrities. What better way is there to forget our own problems than obsessing over the varying successes and failures of society's biggest stars? Who is going back in rehab? Who's launching a celebrity tequila brand? And what old lady is Pete Davidson going to be dating next? It's all so fascinating, and I, for one, your very own humble Papa Yam, just cannot get enough. But did you know, despite the collective delusions of grandeur, many celebrities enjoy the simple things life has to offer as well, and that includes riding motorcycles. Whether it be riding a $100,000 custom build bike at snail's pace in a busy downtown area to flex on the paparazzi, or to momentarily feel a sense of personal autonomy that is otherwise lost when living your life in the public eye, many celebrities love to ride. So without further ado, let's look at 10 celebrity motorcycle enthusiasts. But first, a word from the sponsor of today's video, our very own e-commerce website, yamminoob.co. Now, you know we love to give away motorcycles at yamminoob.co. We've given away dozens over the years, so we'd figured, being wintertime and all, there'd be no better time to switch it up a bit. So for two weeks only, we're gonna be giving away a brand new gaming PC. This thing is a beast. It's a ready-to-ship model from Origin, featuring RTX 4090, 64 gigabytes of RAM, and a 14th gen Intel i9 processor. Yeah, it's also liquid-cooled, so you can play just about anything you want on this thing. Every dollar spent at yamminoob.co gets you entered to win this computer. Any per you make will get you entered. Just imagine, you could have a brand new rig with which to post anime on our Discord server, or make wretched memes, or curse the internet, or absolutely max out all the settings and play Cyberpunk 2077. This promotion's only going till the end of January, so don't sleep on it. Go and check out some parts, or riding gear, some merch, and anticipating the coming riding season, and enter to win an awesome new computer. Okay, let's get into the video. Before being famous for being married to Kristen Bell, and then becoming a podcast bro who loves to talk about his anthropology degree from 20 20 years ago, comedian Dax Shepard was known for award-winning performances in movies like Idiocracy and Without a Paddle. But did you know Dax is also a lifelong motorcycle enthusiast? Being from Detroit, Michigan, he has had a love affair with Go Fast Machines for most of his life. He, not unlike many celebrity riders, has owned and ridden many Ducatis, including a Sport 1000 and a Hyperstrada. But from what you can gather from social media, he isn't just riding these bikes as a fashion statement. Dax seems to be a pretty serious track day bro as well, eschewing the stereotype that celebrities aren't serious riders. He has been seen doing some pretty serious track riding on a Yamaha R1 and a Gixxer 1000 Superbike. Maybe since much of his career has become reliant on an audio-only platform, he feels confident taking risks that other celebrity riders may not. I guess you can still record a podcast within a full-body cast. He's also written and starred in his own automotive-themed action comedies like Hit and Run and Chips, the latter which includes lots of pretty serious motorcycle riding, a significant amount of which he did himself, including the wheelies and stoppies. One of the celebrities most people think of when it comes to motorcycling is, of course, Ewan McGregor. Ewan, famous for his roles in movies like Train Spotting or his recurrent casting as Obi Wan Kenobi in many Star Wars releases, put his passion for motorcycling at the forefront of his film and television career with a docu series, Long Way Around, which originally aired on British network Sky One in 2004. That was 20 years ago, folks, and since then has been loved by riders all over the world. Long Way Around is unofficially considered to be a significant cultural influence for the growing population popularity of adventure-style riding. In Long Way Round, Ewan McGregor and Charlie Borman ride from London to New York City by going eastward through Europe and Asia, flying to Alaska, and then riding down across North America. The duo rode BMW R1150GS adventure motorcycles across varying terrain and landscapes, which ultimately served as a massive marketing tool for BMW. Ironically, they originally requested a sponsor from KTM, who had a long-proven track record in long-distance rally-style events, but the company ultimately backed out as they thought the two would ultimately fail in their quest to ride around the world, so they instead opted for BMW. Imagine if they had picked KTM instead, the whole world might be different now. The series had two sequels including Long Way Down and Long Way Up, the former showcasing the same duo riding from Scotland down to Cape Town, South Africa on BMW R1250 Adventures, and the latter from Argentina north to Los Angeles, California. The Long Way Up documentary showcased the use of modified prototype fully electric Harley-Davidson Livewire motorcycles while their crew used electric Rivian trucks. The use of EVs added an additional challenge as the team tried to navigate a cross country journey with limited charging infrastructure. As for personal riding, it seems like Ewan is partial to Moto Guzzi, having participated as an ambassador in various campaigns and owned an assortment of bikes from Moto Guzzi, including a 1974 Eldorado police bike, a 2000 V11 Sport, and a 1972 V7 Sport. Another celebrity whose passion for motorcycling has made its way into their career in film and television is Norman Reedus. Reedus is most famous for his role as Daryl Dixon in the television show Walking Dead, but has since been created in his own motorcycle 
motorcycle-focused travel show called Ride with Norman Reedus. And if I'm being honest, it's pretty hit or miss. While it's cool that it showcases many different motorcycles and cultures around the world, it is pretty detached from the esoteric world of motorcycling and is clearly catered towards a general audience. Read Normies. Some episodes feel more like advertisements for the places they visit, and Norman's voiceover narration can be kind of cringe, as he talks about finding himself on the open road and other much overused motorcycle cliches. As for his personal bikes, it seems Norman Reedus enjoys the lifestyle end of the motorcycling spectrum, owning multiple custom built or retro style motorcycles. He has a custom Triumph Scrambler, a Harley Davidson Sportster, and a custom CB750 that is character road in The Walking Dead. Alanis Morissette defined mid 90s confessional angst with her alternative singer-songwriter album titled Jagged Little Pill that featured tracks like You Oughta Know and Hand in My Pocket. If her lyrics are any indication, Alanis has felt many things, and the cliches hold true. The best way to sort yourself out is in the saddle of a motorcycle. In reference to the meditative and therapeutic aspects of motorcycling, you may have heard some guy say, you never see a motorcycle parked outside of a therapist's office. And that's likely because the average age of a motorcyclist in America is 48. Never forget. And I think Gen X are as averse to therapy as baby boomers are. But anyways, Alanis Morissette has been seen riding a Ducati monster, and that's about all we know. But just remember, Alanis, it is not safe to ride with one hand in your pocket. Get it? Like, like the song? I'll see my way out. If my tabloid research is correct, which it certainly is, Alanis Morissette began riding motorcycles while dating Ryan Reynolds and then used riding as a coping mechanism to deal with their breakup. I'm truly inspired. Reynolds' relationship with motorcycles is more publicly known, with many photos of him riding around in t-shirts, sneakers, and a three-quarters helmet like every other two-wheeled faux pas you'd expect a celebrity to commit, but when he's not parading around a film set in latex superhero costumes convincing Americans to care about a Welsh soccer team or shilling his decentralized phone service provider, Van Wilder actually rides some pretty cool bikes. He has a custom Triumph Thruxton, fully restored Triumph 650, and a Honda CB750 cafe-styled bike, and a limited edition 2006 Paul Smart Ducati 1000, which is designed in the style of the Ducati 750 Imola Desmo race bike that racer Paul Smart rode to victory at the Imola 2000 in 1972. That bike is really cool. It's kind of like the OG Neo Retro bike. It's pretty neat. Another celebrity that has never shied away from his motorcycling interest is Keanu Reeves. Not only is he routinely seen riding motorcycles on and off screen, Hollywood's favorite nice guy is even the co-founder of the motorcycle company, Arch. Arch is known for building high-end designer motorcycles that blend style and power. Arch is co-owned by Gard Hollinger, who is a longtime motorcycle builder and designer. The Arch KRGT1 is the company's flagship model. This power cruiser is built to order, which allows for a lot of customizability by one purchaser. The bike uses a 2032 cc V-twin engine made by s and as well as fully adjustable oil and suspension. Reeves has many personal motorcycles as well, including some vintage bikes like a 1974 BMW R750, a 1973 Norton Commando, and a Kawasaki KZ900. And of course, you can't forget the Ducati 998 in the Matrix Reloaded livery, the bike that was sold as a limited edition after the release of the film, where Trinity rides a nearly identical dark green 996. It's a really sweet bike. Jason Momoa is one of those actors that everybody knows, but very few have actually seen anything he's been in. No offense to all the Aquaman fans in the audience, but it's just not really my cup of tea. I mostly know of Jason Momoa of all the Harley Davidson ads that he shows up in and every motorcycle related website on the internet. So if that's any indication, Momoa is a Harley simp. As far as his personal bikes, it seems to be a collection of indistinguishable vintage and customized bikes from Harley Davidson. I know, I'm sorry that's vague, but as you guys know, I struggle to differentiate between current Harley Davidson models or bikes from 50 years ago with custom parts or decades of patina, they really all look the same to me. I'm pretty sure he also spray painted a Harley. That feels like something he did. It seems like many celebrities who ride motorcycles are doing it to represent some sort of lifestyle that it is then used to sell products. I mean, you can buy a tank top from Momoa's Harley Davidson on the Rome clothing collection for $60. A tank top for 60 bucks can't make this stuff up. A celebrity who many would not have known was a motorcycle enthusiast if it weren't for his guest appearance on Sons of Anarchy is horror author Stephen King. Steve has no shortage of Hollywood connections as countless of his novels have been adapted into movies and TV shows, and through these connections, he was able to secure a cameo in an episode of Sons of Anarchy where he rides a red Harley Davidson road glide. And that is about all I know about it. I haven't seen the show, but if I were to guess, he plays some sort of rough and tumble biker with masculinity issues and a propensity for violence. 
violence, if I had to guess. Like I said, haven't seen it. But interestingly, considering he is known for a somewhat dorky public person, in contrast to his horror-themed writing style, Stephen King does himself enjoy motorcycle riding and is partial to Harley Davidson. He has even ridden a heritage soft tail from Maine to California during his book tour for Insomnia in 1999. If we're being frank, there is something a little passe about a wealthy middle-aged man making a documentary about finding himself in the saddle of a motorcycle. It just screams Gen X or Boomer behavior. But alas, one of the most famous soccer players of the 20th century, David Beckham, has done just that. David Beckham, who is most known for modeling underwear in Men's Health magazine, is also an avid motorcyclist. He has a few different triumphs, including a Bonneville and a custom scrambler, as well as some bikes made by custom builders like British Customs and Garage Company. Released in 2014, Beckham was in a documentary called Into the Unknown, where he rides a motorcycle through Brazil and into the Amazon rainforest. I haven't seen it, so I'm unsure if he rediscovers his sense of childlike wonder or solidifies his friendships by overcoming the challenges and hardships one would face while traveling in a foreign country. Or, you know, eat some strange food or what other type of fish out of water shenanigans that seem to happen in movies and TV shows like this. And the last motorcycle enthusiast on the list is Richard Hammond. Not known for modeling underwear or doing strange co-branded clothing deals, Richard Hammond is an iconic figure of automotive journalist. He's best known for co-hosting the BBC2 automotive show Top Gear, you might have heard of it, from 2002 to 2015. Hammond's role on Top Gear earned him popularity for his humor, enthusiasm, and participation in various automotive challenges and stunts. He has countless bikes in his ownership, ranging from nearly 100 years of motorcycle production. Here is a quote from 2014 where Hammond outlines his collection. Here we go. A 1927 Sunbeam Model 2, a 1950 BMW R51 RS replica, a 1959 Norton Dominator Racer, a new Norton Commander 961 SE, a 1976 Honda Goldwing, good taste, 1974 Kawasaki Z900, 1976 Yamaha FS1E, Honda SS50, Kawasaki ZXR 750H1, Suzuki GSXR 1100, Kawasaki KR1S, Moto Guzzi Le Mans MK1, the Moto YB9, Ducati 916 SPS Foggy Replica, two BMW K1s, a Suzuki GS1000, BMW K100RS, R100RT, R90S, and my daily ride, which is an R1200RT. So yeah, he's got a lot of bikes. Also, please leave a like for my editor who just had to find photos for all of those bikes. God bless you, Josh. Thank you so much. Thank you for making to the end of the video. Which celebrity has your preferred motorcycle collection? I'm blocking anyone who says Jay Leno. Be sure to check out yamanube.co to shop for gear, join up and access our Discord, stay connected, and you'll never miss out the cool stuff we got planned for 2024. And make sure you check out that gaming PC giveaway. I'll catch you guys later. Fact. The highest vehicle mileage recorded is on a 1966 Volvo with over 3 million miles. Goodbye. Keep watching Yammy Nerd.